is risen. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to say good morning. Good morning to everyone here in the House today as we continue to discuss Bill 5, Fiscal Measures and Taxation Act. Always a pleasure to get up and speak in the House, of course, and, uh, and address the issues that are before us. One of the first things that uh, uh, I'd like to, to focus on is respect for democracy. I mean, we just heard from the honourable member on the other side that he respects the process that uh, have been established within this House, uh, traditions that have been established within this House. But you know, time and time again, we see that this government, over the short period that they've been in power, have come in and they've, they've turned over some of the traditions of this very House. You know, making it so that they can do what they want to do when they want to do it. And what, what that speaks to me is, is that it's, it's not respect for, for tradition, because they think that they know best. And then here we are discussing one of the most important bills uh, for Albertans that is going to impact each and every Albertan and the government imposes closure, not allowing members from the opposition to have full time to really be able to discuss the implications, the very serious economic, and not only economic, but social implications that this budget will have on the people of Alberta. Now, the Honourable uh, Minister and President of the Treasury Board, you know, got up and eloquently spoke about how this budget will provide resources for programs. But this very same budget is going to be taking away the economic resources from specific programs that actually help the Albertans that need it the most and, that, and I'm talking about even in pre, the pre-pandemic. We were going to see, with this budget that this government was proposing, a number of cuts. Now, the members on the opposite side have gotten up time and time again. No, these are not cuts. These are not cuts. But as we can clearly see, with the budget estimates that have been put forward before this House, they're taking money from one place and putting it in another. Yeah, yeah. it is called management, but it, they're taking it from specific places, Mr. Speaker, taking it from specific programs. And who's being affected? Well, seniors are being affected, Mr. Speaker. Those who are living on age, those who would have to access income uh, supports, and these are people that we see come into our constituency offices day after day after day after day. And Mr. Speaker, I can speak to you and tell you that a number of people contact me, and this is even pre-pandemic, coming in to speak to me about how the budget that's being proposed by this government was going to negatively impact them. Now, pre-COVID-19, uh, as many of us, I was out door knocking with, uh, with uh, volunteers in, in my constituency. I heard from a number of teachers, teachers' assistants, nurses, and the very serious concern about how this government was going to be moving money out of some specific programs, and then where they were going to move it to, nobody, nobody knows. How, what is their plan? It's, it's not very clear. But these are Albertans. These are Albertans that are, have serious concerns that, for example, puff funding. I can't tell you how many, how, many, uh, how many people I heard on the doorstep that were concerned about this issue. The number of emails that have poured in to my constituency office regarding this. 
And not only that, but a number of other, a num number of other topics. As I already stated, seniors, how the, this budget was going to be affecting seniors, affecting those living on age and those needing to access income uh, supports. So what we see is a government that's circumventing the democratic process. And this isn't the first bill uh, uh, of which they, they, they're, they're doing this. And we see this repeatedly with this government in their short term, their short, pardon me, their short time in office. I mean, we can hope it's a short term, but it's a short time in office so far. So we can only ask ourselves, okay, well, how much more of this are we going to see? Because it's a, it's a repeating process. Now, not only that, are they... They're, they're so focused on circumventing the traditions and the economic process that has been established in this house. But we see time and time again with bills that are being put forward in this house is that they're taking over and the, the autonomy of other governing structures within our society. And they're pulling in and saying, okay, well, you know what? It doesn't matter what agency, board, or commission. Now we're seeing it specifically with school boards uh, within Bill 5. We're seeing it within post-secondary institutions. But what they are doing, Mr. Speaker, is that they're putting more decision-making power in the hands of the ministers that actually sit in front of us. Now, how is that more democratic? When we already have democratic institutions, we have agencies, boards, and commissions that are actually helping this society in making the decisions. So, th and this is the thing. When you have more people making more decisions, helping make those decisions, no matter how big or small they are, you're getting more perspective. And now what we see happening is that this government is taking this opportunity by circumventing tradition and circumventing the democratic process. And they're taking and they're putting more power in the hands of the ministers on the other side. And they're just saying, hey, trust us. Trust us. We know what is best for Albertans. And at the very same time that we have members on the other side that form cabinet, Mr. Speaker, saying, trust us, we know what's best for Albertans, we have Albertans themselves coming to us and saying, we are so incredibly concerned with the budget that this government is putting forward. And more of that decision-making power is going to be in the hands of the ministers. And to Albertans, I say, be watchful, be mindful. Because this is, we are here for Albertans. And as an opposition member, and along with my opposition colleagues, we're trying to do our very best to bring this to the attention of Albertans. And by implementing closure and not letting us discuss bills that are coming before this House, they're circumventing the, the democratic process. Now, we had a government that said that they were going to promise jobs. And you know, this isn't me saying it. This is Albertans that have come to me. I've actually had a number of, of constituents that said, you know what, Rod, I voted, oh, pardon me, you know what, member from Edmonton Ellerslie, quote, unquote. <laughs> I voted UCP. They admitted to me. I, I voted UCP. And you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about the constituents. 
Relax. Relax. <laughs> I'm quoting here, members, members. <laughs> Constituents have actually come to me and said, you know what, Ra you know what, member from Edmonton Ellerslie? I voted UCP in the last election, but I won't be voting UCP again. Yeah. Because these are people who actually believed the members on the other side when they said, we are going to fix Alberta. We're going to get Alberta back to work again. And what have we seen? We've seen a $4.7 billion corporate handout with no jobs. Constituents are coming to me and saying, they promised jobs. That's why we voted for them. They promised jobs. They said they were going to turn this economy around and that things were going to get better. But instead, they're not getting better. And there's no new jobs. And in fact, we see we see less jobs. And not only that, we see flee of capital from the province, monies that have been given out, and now corporations are, they're, like, they're happy to take the money, and they're going and they're investing it in other jurisdictions across this land and even in, in, in other countries. This is a reality. Now, let's put on top of this proposed budget the pressures of COVID-19 and what Albertans are experiencing. They're scared. They're very scared. They're very concerned. They're concerned about the future. They're concerned about what's going to happen. And I, and I understand the government on the other side wants to get its budget passed. And, uh, and I believe that their intention is good. They want to make sure that they have the money so that, they can put that, so that we can make sure that the government continues uh, functioning. But let me remind you that they're taking, with the proposed budget, they're taking money out of the programs upon which... Albertans were depending. And now, with the added pressure of the coronavirus pandemic, more Albertans are going to be depending on it. So you're actually saying, help us pass this budget, but the resource, the economic resources that those, those programs were, are supposed to, uh, so that those Albertans can get the help that they need is still not going to be there. And with this particular bill, not only that, now we're seeing that with, with school boards and post-secondary institutions, now more of the decision-making power is going to be in the hands of the minister. So you're asking me on this side of the house to say, come on, play ball member from Edmonton Ellerslie, play ball. Problem is you're not passing the ball. That's the problem. You're not helping Albertans with this budget. You're not putting the money into the specific programs that are going to be able to, that are needed to help the people that are going to need it most, even now more than ever, with the, the coronavirus pandemic at our doorstep. And that is why it is absolutely impossible for me to support this bill. And as so many of my honorable colleagues on this side of the House have gotten up and they've spoken to it, and you know, I, I get it, we just, we have differing of opinions. You, you think you know what's best. 
and you've made that clear. But not all Albertans agree with you. Honorable members, standing order 29 2A.